Hi, it's Matt Thomas here from King of League, back upon the Sonic. And I'm going to talk to you today about using Ableton Live, live. Because we can, that's what it's best at, really. I mean, we all use it as a DAW, and that's great. But actually, it was invented to let us play electronic music live, and that's something which some people never even looked at. So we're going to look at it. Why now? Well, even when Ableton said, like, we need like a live DAW, there was you know some interest in live gigging. But compared to now, there wasn't much. Now, everybody's out buying those little micro synths and your boutique guitar pedals. And even if you're not playing out live, you stick it on Instagram, and it looks fantastic. Get your camera straight down, all your gear, and you're there doing your jam. So there's this opportunity to kind of create a niche for yourself by being somebody who can perform electronic music live. However, that niche, if you go the micro synths and boutique pedal route, it's going to cost you hundreds or thousands of pounds. Now, the, the reason these things are cool is they're compact, they're portable, and they're very hands-on. Now, my laptop's portable, and the controllers I've got are very hands-on. And inside a lot of these boutique pedals, there's a, a little computer. Now, I've got a really big computer. I already paid for it. So you see where I'm going? We've already got all the ingredients we need. We just haven't got the sort of the Instagram vibe, the bling. So I'm going to add two secret ingredients, OK? And with them, what I'm going to show you will hit the basics of using Ableton Live, and you can start doing your own jams on Instagram or on stage, in the booth, wherever you want. So the secret ingredients, with no further delay. Oh, yeah, cheap, hipster-approved guitar pedal. I'm not even going to plug it in, but it will be essential, OK? Keep an eye out for it. Oh, yeah, the pot plant. You've seen it. You've seen the videos of the pot plant. So with this, this, and some hints about how to use Ableton in a live situation, you are heading for Instagram legend status now. Some people have turned on Ableton, gone, Where, where's the arrange window? Uh, oh, there it is. Great. I'm done. And not really ever looked at this beyond using it as a mixing environment. So drag your eyes up here. Yeah, there it is. That's the clip launching section. This is where we do live stuff in live. This is the fundamental core of this idea. Yeah. We've got these tracks. And in the tracks, we've got slots. And into those slots, we can put samples, clips, they're called, OK? So let's start with that. Let's stick a few samples in now. So let's grab one to start with. There is bog standard, simple, kick loop. OK, there it is. Dum, 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 dum. And we can play that by pressing on that little play arrow. OK. When I've heard enough of it, I can press that play arrow again and it stopped. There we go. Now you might think, well, it didn't stop straight away. And some of you might be thinking, I've used Ableton. And when I press play again, it didn't stop. It started again. Yeah, this is this is the joy of it. There's all kinds of fiddly stuff to get into, like this thing here, the global quantize. Or down here, we've got launch modes. But don't worry, we're going to get to all those. So for now, the fundamental fact is we can launch a clip and either press that play again, or we can stop it by pressing an empty clip. See here, all these little squares, like a stop button here, same as here on the transport. So we've got play, arrow, stop, square. So if I want to stop, I can press anywhere in that same column, and it'll stop. OK, now that's introduced us to our first idea. And that is that columns can only have one clip playing in them at a time. OK, so if I start this playing, if I press stop in a different column, doesn't have any effect. We've still got that happily playing away. Okay, but if I press stop in the same column, it stops. And if I put a different kick loop into the same column here, yeah, and then I press our first one, you'll see we stop playing that 05 and we'll switch to 01. Okay. Now you'll have heard there that they've stayed in sync. So unless I set these clips up specifically to just play the second I press them, we can quantize them. And that's something, again, we'll look at set down here in the quantize section for each clip. So these things are going to play in time, unless, as I say, we specifically set them up so they don't do that. So straight away, we've got some handy features. We've got a bit like the channels in our range window. We've got these columns of clips. Okay, and there's only one thing can be in that column. Same as in a channel. If I put a load of drums in channel one and then put some bass in channel one, they're not going to play at the same time. One is going to be in that channel at any given time. So it's the same here. Okay, there's one here. And if I interrupt it, and vice versa. And if I stop it, it stops. 
Now, you're probably starting to think, oh, okay, so if I want to make like layers of sounds, I can do that by making these rows here. I can sort of row up a bunch of stuff and they can play at the same time, presumably. And yes, you're dead right. That's what happens. So let's just squiz on down and get, um, dum -de -da. try and find something here yeah, without a big kick on it. I'll do. Okay. So now if I press the kick and then this, okay. So a row can have multiple things playing at once. A column can't. So this tells us that we can switch between elements in a column and we can layer up elements in a row. Now a row is also called a scene, okay? A whole row, it doesn't matter how many columns there are in this row, it's called a scene. And I can launch it from over here. You see this master section? So if I press this play bar, everything on that row in that scene will launch. So let's stop this. Okay, I'll just stop these as well. So now, if I press this, let's see what happens. There we go. Everything fired off. You can even see if you watch these empty clips, even they are going to flash up when I press the scene. Okay, so watch those stop things. If there's nothing there, it won't have any effect, but you can see it triggers the entire row. Okay. So if there were something there, just to prove this point very quickly, let's get some uh, percussion on there. Okay, let's put some percussion in. Okay, and start that going. So there's our loop, okay? How long is that going to go on for? Well, it's going to go on indefinitely because these loops, as the word suggests, are loops. As you drag a sample in, Ableton's going to assume that you're going to want to loop it. You can switch it off. You can turn this loop off, and you'll see now at the end of this run, that's it. It'll just play once, and I can do that. Okay, but by default, when you drag a sample into this clip view, it will probably loop it up for you, okay? So because all these things are looped, they will continue indefinitely. It's not like an arrangement where we've got to kind of keep saying, I want 16 of this and eight of that. No, this is going to keep going and going and going unless you stop it. So in terms of stopping it, as I say, we have these stop buttons. I can individually bring things out. Similarly, I can use an empty scene to stop things. And that stops all of them together. As well as that, there's a really handy thing, which is we can deactivate a clip. You see here, the sort of, is the clip on or off? Okay. So that's in the range window, we call that a bypass. But here, it's just basically meaning, can the clip be triggered? Once it's deactivated, I can't trigger it. Okay, I can clip that all day, nothing. So once I've reactivated it, it can be triggered again. So a handy feature in this window is I can select a clip here and just press zero on my keyboard here, yeah? and it's instantly deactivated. It didn't have to wait for the quantize or that stuff that we saw before, you know, when I'm switching between clips, it waits and goes to the end of the bar or the end of the beat where you've set it. With this deactivate, it's worth bearing this in mind as a fundamental thing. If you need to switch a sample off just instantly, you can just press zero, and it's gonna stay dead until you press zero again, and then it's gonna wait, and when you press play, Okay, so always bear in mind if you're working live with live, if you need to kill a sound straight away, yeah, you can mute stuff. But if you want to have that channel free for something else, straight away after, and you just want the current sound that's going to drop straight out, you hit zero. And there it goes, it's gone. And I'm ready to go again. Okay, now when I press stop, watch these arrows here. So the track stops when I press stop, good. However, these are all still what's called like a play standby mode, okay? This means that as soon as any other clip starts playing, these guys are gonna come back in. If I stick a different piece of percussion on channel four, there we go. Now you would think ordinarily, well, if I just press on four, then just channel four, this number 14 percussion is gonna play. But because these were playing when I press stop, they're ready to go again straight away. And I think that's a bit fiddly. It kind of is, and it's kind of handy as well, because it means, say for example, you want to start a tune off and you've got dozens of these columns, these tracks here, yeah? Then setting them all up and firing them all off at once 
could be fiddly. Let's say you want only like half of them playing as the track starts. In that case, you can get all the things you want lined up and then press stop and they'll be waiting for the next time you press either play here or start another clip and they will all come straight in, okay? So that's the purpose of this. It's, it can catch you out because it's there for a purpose that you may not need. When you stop, remember, things aren't cleared. They're left in standby mode. And the second you press either another clip or start the transport, this happens. Okay, they all come in together. So I'll stop it now. So if I want to take these out of standby, I can simply either clear the scene or let's quickly get them going again. Or I can individually think, well, actually, I'd like the column one and four to be ready to come in when I start this track off. So let's do that. Okay, so that's the, the creative use for it, is actually setting up the tracks you want running, pressing stop, and off you go. Now, as with the arrange window where it's less useful, live, one of the features built into Ableton is this thing where you do a, a shift stop of the whole track. So what this means, if I press stop, okay, if I press that space bar again, it restarts to the beginning. Okay. However, if I press shift and space bar, it picks up at the same point. So if you want to do some sort of dramatic stop in your track, say, every hour in Detroit, which is what people say, then you can then come straight back in again, place where you want. So that's the fundamentals of controlling the clips, okay? To repeat it, you've got columns, you can have multiple things in a column, but only one will play at a time. And you've got rows called scenes, you can have multiple things in a scene, and they can play together at the same time, as many as we want to, or all of them. And you can fire them all off from over here. And these are the scene triggers that trigger off the whole scene, okay? Other things to look at just quickly in terms of visual feedback. These pie charts tell you how long a clip has to go. It may not matter dramatically, but you might be using, say, for example, a vocal section, which you know at the end of which that's the end of your verse. So you might want to know, oh, we're getting towards the end of that section. So when they're playing, you can watch. So there you go. This one, the whizzing rounds, two bars. And this guy's a bit longer here, four bars. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the pie charts let you see how long a clip has to go until it gets back to the loop point. If you don't have too many channels on and you want to see more information about what's in there that it's actually a deep house kick loop you can resize the width of these channels columns and you can also hold down alt and do the whole lot at once okay so don't leave this big empty bit here if you're only using a few channels take advantage spread it out see what's going on besides what we can see here there is a couple of preferences just quickly worth mentioning in Record Warp Launch, there are Select on Launch, Select Next Scene on Launch, Start Recording on Scene Launch. Okay, what do they do? Select on Launch is quite a biggie for people once they've been doing this for a while. You may always want the scene that you've just fired off to be what's here to edit. That might make sense to you. However, if there's occasions where you want to fire off another clip but keep the edit focus on the thing you're currently working on, then you turn this off. So for example, I put two bits percussion here and I want to fire this off. Now let's say I want to see the kicks, okay? Visually, I want to see that kick there so I can remember where that did is. Oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. But I still want to be changing percussion loops. Well, I can, you see? I've just changed percussion loops and it hasn't jumped to show me the percussion loops, which would look like this. I can say, no, once I've selected a clip, that's what I'm looking at. I don't care really whatever else gets fired off. I can always go and select them. You see the, the fire sort of arrow here, the trigger arrow? Yeah, if I press that, it triggers. If I just want to examine this clip, I just click in the name, yeah? And there you go, I can see what's happening in there. Click in the name, it doesn't trigger it off, it just lets me look at the content of that clip. So that's what that preference is for. Next one is the select next scene on launch. Now this is an interesting one. If you, let's say for example, I set up, I've got, few channels there of you know, kick, groove, and some percussion. Let's put different percussion on each one of those 
rows, okay? Now, if I just want to jam around with these, these scenes, I can do it here. Okay, so I can just do that randomly as I like. But let's say, for example, I actually laid out the shape of a track. Like that was my intro. This was my first 16 bars. This is the near the next. If I knew I just wanted to step, 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 step. Well, that's what select next scene on launch means. So to do that, I click here over in the scene, just in the sort of the empty area. I don't fire it off. I just click in the area. And then I can press return on my keyboard. And what will happen is it will fire off that first scene and that blue selection will jump down to the next scene. And as soon as I'm ready, I press return again, and it'll fire the next scene and move ready to the next one and so on. So you watch. Okay, so it's fired off that top scene. It's moved to scene two. And as soon as I'm ready, I just press return again. And there we go. Firing off scene two, and it's ready to go with scene three. I fire that now. And now we're ready to go to scene four. And there we are at the end of the track. Done. Okay, so that's the purpose of select next scene on launch. It means instead of having to kind of mess around with your mouse or be, you know, if you want the freedom to jump around between parts, that's fine. But if you've laid out a predefined track and you just want to be free to sort of move from section to section in your own time, select next scene on launch, highlight that empty area in the scene launcher, and then just keep it in return. And the final one of the preferences was start recording on clip launch, which quite simply means as I launch any clip, we will start recording. And that recording can make a complete sort of arrangement recording of what we're doing live. So the whole time we're jamming, it's being recorded over in the arrangement window, and we can then go back and edit it. I'll show you how to do that later on. So that is the fundamentals, quite a bit there, but actually fairly straightforward stuff. Next, we'll have a look at how we can control the way the clips behave down here in these little tabs, known helpfully as the clip tabs. 